welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And there's a little seven-year-old girl out there who's a fan. I just gave her a wristband. She's going wild in the intro. I've got adoring fans, man. I'm like the new kids on the block up in this piece. We have a lot of explaining to do on today's show, and then we'll get into some amazing wines. And we have a crap load, let's call it a boatload, a ridiculous amount of shout outs at the end of the show and we'll get to that. It is awesome to be back into the Thunder Saddle Mott and uh, I'm excited about it because that's what I do. Now, you and I had a little bit of a miscommunication with Matt, let's throw, let's throw Matt under the bus too, he was involved as well. Let's get right into what's going on with, what was it, last Tuesday's episode? Blind Cabs. The Blind Cabernet Tasting. Let me tell you exactly what happened, Vayner Nation. Um, exactly what happened with last Tuesday's or Wednesday's episode of the Blind Cabernet Tasting, which, as you know, the ending was never shown. I'll just put it all out there, the whole breakdown. Here's what happened. So, we taped a bunch of shows, as we know, because I just traveled, I just went on a book signing. Big ups to the people at Corkscrew in Houston and San Fran and Chicago at Seed, and I'll give shout outs to everybody later. Uh, but an amazing time, got to meet a bunch of wonderful people, and that was amazing to me. Um, what basically happened was we taped last week's episodes, a bunch of them, about 12 of them, uh, while I was away, uh, in one seating. We really killed him. I remember I spilled some wine, we changed some shirts, we did dry cleaning, put the shirts back on. It was really a lot of fun and we pounded through. We did a blind tasting and during that tasting we had a bunch of cool wines and we had great results and uh, everything was fine. While I was away on Monday, Tuesday, I was talking to Brandon about business and uh, looking at inventories and things of that nature and I noticed we had an obscene amount of uh, one of the wines that we had in the Thunder Show. Um, and I was like, uh, I was like, why do we have so much of this wine? Because I, I realized what happened with it, with the blind tasting, and Brandon proceeded to remind me that it was our own, Wine Library's own private label. Now, many of you who've watched the show know that we have four or five private labels in the store and we've never do them on Wine Library TV. That's just something we don't do. And so um, I was really caught off guard because this deal we made was done about two years ago and the wine finally came. And obviously when I was doing the Thunder Show, I, you know, when I unveiled it, I, I just didn't know. I kind of basically forgot. But knowing what everybody knows about me, I knew that one, most people wouldn't believe that. And I wouldn't either because everybody knows what kind of a genius I am. Why would I forget? And I, two, I know people don't realize how detached I am from the day-to-day -day business with Wine Library t right now. But, you know, I still keep an eye on things. And I just was not going to show that show. Basically, to let you know, the private label won the entire tasting blind. So even if it came in last, I probably would have not run the show um, because you know we just want to be transparent with the show. And so I'm very concerned and told Ma and Matt everything. We're not airing that show. And we picked one extra show, the Texas Wine Show, so we were gonna air that instead. We're gonna now air that on Thursday when I go up to Philly for the big signing, so everybody in Philly big up. But um, what became the problem was they emailed me back. I emailed them that night once I realized what had happened that we had a wine in the show that was our private label and that's a big problem. And so I told them to not air the show. Um, when, then they came back to me and said, we have a problem. You have some pertinent information. We had a contest winner. We had some dates, some link it ups. So I wrote back, fine, just put that little part to Matt, not to Mott. Put that little part in the show and then let, have Mott come on and say, listen, we'll tell you why this show never aired. So I thought you'd get the intro and then Mott. One minute show. What happened was you got the entire show. Who, where did that break down? Right as you were unveiling. I, no, I know, I saw what you did. You freaking suckered them in. So what happened was I know how the show went down. It got into like this whole like surprise conspiracy soprano stuff. Then the real problem became that, you know, that you guys got invested into the episode. And instead of being a one minute show with Mott telling you, Gary will explain on Monday, you got to see the whole show, got invested, and I understand. And so it's a big, mess up. Then I emailed again and told him to tell him I'd tell Monday and then you know you said I'd come back the next day. Right. Thank God all ex so the bottom line is it's a big mess. We never intended to show the show at all. All I wanted was the contest winner and what have you and then I would explain that we did a show on Cabernet Blind, one of the wines was worse. And so I really apologize. Um, we have no intentions of ever showing the ending and you know it just it's not what the show's about and you can understand why I never wanted to air the show at all. I really wish I just went with my intuition and said don't air it at all. Of course, you know, the boys wanted the information. I should have just taped something from the road. I really, really apologize and it sucks and um, I'm sorry. So, that's that. Let's get into some vino. Four wines, value driven. Um, 
wines, all under 12 bones, all different stuff. I decided to have a little fun. We have the Tango Dancing Coyote from California, and we have the Banging Red, which I loved. I mean, banging is just the best word on earth anyway. Um, and so that's a lot of fun. Then we have a Portuguese wine, you know I've been screaming and yelling, and we have a Long Island Merlot because I just think that they're bringing some interesting wines from the LI, a little New York represent, up in this piece. So let's get into the first wine, the Fido. F-A-D-O, 2006 Portuguese Red, 84 points, Mark Squires, seven US dollars, 25% Trincadera, 25% Syrah, 25% Turiga Nacional, and 25% Petit Verdot, and you guys all know what I think about Petit Verdot. The two middle wines, the first and third grape, excuse me, are indigenous to the Portuguese area grapes. You got Syrah and Petit Verdot making up 50%. Chitara is going to chill with you, and uh, I'm going to give this a little bit of a whirl, and say it with me, Vayner Nation, let's give this wine a snippy sniff. Well, what do you think about the explanation, you know? We broke it down, right? I think so. You feel bad about it? I, I feel horrible. I should just stuck to the... Now this is wild. Come on, get a little sniff of this. This is very vegetal. Pickles. Smells like, you get it? Smells exactly like pickle juice, a little sauerkraut, yeah. this, right? Wild. With black cherry, a little chocolate on top too. But very heavy with the fertilizer, pickle juice, a um, little basil action. Um, very interesting little wine uh, right off the bat from our good friends from Portugal. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see what's going on here. A little more. A little more thunder, maybe coming up. Snippy sniff one more time. I get some great leather, really great dark cherry flavors on the mid palate, a little hint of dark chocolate, surrounded by a celery stick kind of thing going on. Very vegetal, but there's good fruit in the middle. A very nice value for seven bones. Portugal continues again. Once again showing me that it can bring value to the table. At seven bones, with the Euro being where it is, this wine is doing a great job. The Fido is doing very well. Not only a cute little dog name, but an interesting little wine. Um, good structure, good balance. I feel the Petit Verdot, the darkness. You know, the dark night Batman when mean, not nice, you know? Like, instead of pow, it's like, his, you know. Anyway, so really serious structured wine with good balance, good fruit. Uh, overall, I would say this is an 87 point wine. I think Mark Squire's 84 points is way too low. I'm gonna go 87 plus, seven bones, go out there and buy this instead of your supermarket brands that you're all rocking and rolling to and uh, continued the momentum of the Portuguese wines. Is this doing justice for the area? Absolutely, and I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I like the English peas, good structure, nice wine, good start, value show. East End Select, 2003 Merlot from Pellegrini, 10 US dollars, which happens to be Chad Pennington's number, um, who will be the backup of your New York Jets because I've been getting pounded on that email wise. Speaking of emails, there's probably some shout outs and some other emails that I haven't even gotten to between the 10 flights in 12 days and seven flights in seven days last week. I flew every single day from Vegas to Houston, Houston to Austin on Tuesday, drove back to Houston after that. Wednesday I flew to New York, Thursday from New York to Houston, Mop. Thir Friday from Houston to Chicago, Saturday from Chicago to Houston, Sunday Chica Houston to, uh, to New York. So. Between all that, one, I look like a mess, I apologize for that, and two, I um, am definitely backed up on email, so I apologize to anybody who I'm a little bit backed up on. So nice color on wine number two, the East End. Let's give Nikolai a little bit of, there you go, Nick. He liked that. Did he get that on camera? No? Zoom in on Nikolai, getting all drizzy. Getting a little drunky drunk there. All right, let's give this a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now this comes across with a little bit of blackberry, a little black currant. A little strawberry fruit as well. Let's give it a whirl. A little light on the body, a little austere on the back end. Kind of basic. A 
Yeah, this is a thin Merlot with a lot of dirty leaves meets green peppers meets a little bit of blackberry. I don't see this appealing to a lot of people. Definitely not to me. Completely hollow mid palate. Like boop, like a circle. A circle in the sky. Actually, here, it's actually this. There's some fruit, circle, and there's a finish. So here's your wine. Uh, uh, uh. So, not doing much for me. The finish is basic and boring. This reminds me of a lot of six, seven dollar wines that are out there in the market today. I'm gonna score this wine 78 points and give it a pass with multiple Z's. Throw it up, Mott. We're not going in that direction. And I would have loved to give Long Island a little bit of love. That's where Jets practice. And um, a little disappointing. Let's move on. It's good to be back in the saddle, huh? Just disappointed about the controversy, but great to be back. Let's see what the Dancing Coyote thinks. Dancing Coyote, Tango, 2004. This wine rolls in at 50% Cabernet, 25% Tempranillo, uh, and 25% Cabernet Franc. So I appreciate them going outside the box. As all of you know, all I care about with the vino is people trying different things, exploring. This is a very unusual blend. So right on that level at 12 Bones, it's worth a roll and a whirl and an effort and a try and all of the above. And so let's see what's going on here. I'm gonna first give it a sniffy sniff because that's what I do. Tight nose. I get like, oh, hmm. I get a little grenadine, which is kind of interesting. I also get a little bit of pomegranate on the nose, but then I also get like a, like a, like a air freshener kind of thing going on, like an aerosol kind of component, which is a little weird. Let's give it a whirl. Definitely a weird kind of nose. Has some hardiness and some body on the mid palate, which I like. Little beef jerky-ish with a little bit of strawberry sauce. Not horrible, kind of pleasant in some ways. I think the Tempranillo brings a nice sour raisin, sour cherry kind of thing going on, which I like. It's a little fakey fake on the back end, like Kim Kardashian, if that makes sense. Um, but overall, pleasant, um, but not crazy complex. Interesting wine, worth 12 bucks in the marketplace in my opinion, because it's giving you a little bit of a sense of a different flavor profile than a lot of the wines that a lot of people are consuming from California in this price point. I'm not killed by it, but I'm definitely not disappointed. Didn't change my life, but definitely worth an effort. And for new wine drinkers that are seduced by the fruit and the kind of richness of wine, this could be a very nice play. I like the fact that you would get Tempranillo and Cabernet Franc into your blood, into your DNA, so I like that part about this wine. An interesting little play. The Coyote is tangoing a little bit, but it's its first time. You know, like voted off the second round of Dancing with the Stars. I'm gonna score this wine 86 plus points. I think it's an interesting wine. I do like the Fado better for my palate. I think more people would like the Dancing Coyote than the Fado in the way that's out there right now, unless you're getting more into the interesting, dirty, you know, vegetal wines, but a great example of a wine that is very much a marketing play, that has some guts to it. Definitely a wine that I can see myself wrapping my head around, watching the ball game, having no problem, because the Cabernet Franc and the Tempranillo is bringing an interesting element to the Cabernet in this situation. Again, 50% Cabernet, 25 Temp, 25 Cap Franc. I'm gonna kick you a little bit more content because that's what I'm supposed to do. An hour or two of breathing, this wine could even be a little bit better. I think we're about an hour right now. And right now, I'll tell you another thing. Would love to try this with BBQ ribs. You know, I was just in Houston, thinking about all that barbecue. I think this is a wine that can really do well in that scenario. Little fake for me, but that's okay. It's like, it's not artificial turf, but it's like that fake grass that they have now. Like, what is that grass they have in the stadiums? It's turf. Pellets. Yeah, it's weird, it's cool though. It's been good, it's been great for Giants Jets Stadium, mm. right? See how I call it Giant Jets? I noticed. Well, it's gonna be a new stadium. You know, if we keep doing, maybe it could be the Wine Library TV. Uh... Banging Red, 2005, Napa Valley for 10 bones. It's getting easier to buy grapes out there. Great little package, fun little guy here. It's like, a, this is weird, like a little devil-ish kind of guy. I love this, 45.1% Cabernet, 19.1% Cabernet Franc, 18.7 Merlot, 
8.8 Petit Verdot, there it is again, 5.2 Malbec, and 3.1 Zinfandel. So fun little blend, 10 bones. Let's see what this little sucker's got. I love the package for fun, right? Great entry level, trying to market to the millennials, like 21 to 30 year olds, love little characters. Right, right. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. God, it's good to be back. I missed you guys so much. Black licorice coming through in the nose, very extracted, giving me that fake Australian kind of component on the nose that I talk about a lot. It's not fair to pick on Australia. And Spain, and California, and plenty of other places bring in that kind of thunder, or let's call it drizzle. I do get some black currants coming through, a little plum action, which I'm always down for. Ate a nice plum yesterday, and an apricot. Fruits, they're good. Let's give this a whirl. Some good weight. Ah, the oak monster makes a little bit of an appearance. I'm always scared about that. Um, but some complex fruit on this wine. Um, tastes a little bit like raisinets. I get a little bit of that chocolate, a little bit of that raisin thing going on, but pretty darn basic, folks. Um, reminds me of some wines that I've had you know, in this exact range. I mean, it's playing in the place it should. Maybe it should play in a seven to eight dollar range. Um, an interesting little wine. I'm gonna go 83 plus. You know, it's not killing me, but I don't, I'm not hurt. My feelings aren't sad. It didn't throw me off the playground. It's just kind of one dimensional, which is that dimension is fruit um, that's basic, right? Just like here's, you know, what's the best way to, I mean, it's really like you grilling a burger and eating BBQ burger with just a bun at home or going to Danielle Blue's DB and having their burger, which is extremely extravagant and has foie gras in the middle, even though you know some people are against that and I understand, I respect that, but you know, just a very complex uh, Epicurean experience compared to the basic, let me have a hamburger with a bun, no, no, no mustard or ketchup or mayo, which I put all three on my hamburger, by the way, Mott. And so um, that's how I kind of look at it, very basic effort, um, but definitely not bad because a burger and a bun is not too bad either. You like a burger and a bun, right? Yeah, too, too oaky for me. <clears throat> Cut me up a little bit, right? That's why I have the wristband. It's not for this, even though I use it for all the time. It's when Oak Muncher tries to grab me. This, this is like his kryptonite. He's like, ah. So, anyway. Interesting show. I guess, um, did the dancing coyote beat the, you know, did, was it like this? I mean, it was in this kind of range, right? I think that's how we ranked them up. Good show. All interesting wines. I'll be very honest with you. Pretty happy with the show, except for the Pellegrini. All three are serviceable. I like the fact that these two wines are widely available, so I'm trying to do more of that for middle America and the places that don't have great wine shops around. Uh, I was in Houston. Specs is a great shop there, so if you're looking for things, I think they always do a good job. But now I want to get into some shout outs. Uh, but before I do, because I don't want to lose all the audience because I know some of you are going to leave, two big announcements. Matt, link it up. Wednesday, we're going to be at Costco in Edison, New Jersey. Let's link that up. I'm gonna be doing some signing. Please come and check me out there. That's my old home stomping grounds, hometown. Please come and hook up. Give me a shout out in Edison, New Jersey. I'd love to see you guys there for that. Uh, number two, um, I'm now hanging out with some little clips, exclusive videos at Eat, Drink, or Die, which is a cool little website, kind of like the Funny or Die Will Ferrell's thing. So Mott, link that up. And uh, I hope you check me out there. Also, Almost the fourth generation wristbands are in production, so you'll be getting them if you were part of that. Hopefully we'll have some more to give away and do cool things with you guys on that. And now I want to do some shout outs. Number one, Neil Temples. 60th birthday was May 30th. We're sorry we missed it, been traveling a lot. Happy belated birthday, Dar Darla Wise's birthday, Mott. June 6th, happy birthday to you, Darla. Uh, Jeremy Perez's 28th birthday, May 23rd. Lucky, God, I'd pay to be 28, Mott. How about you? Big, right? Uh, Branson Tubbs, 31, a little bit more closer to home with me on, this, on the 31st of May. 31, 31, so that, that passed. Steve, uh, Stacy Buchanan's birthday from AmericaWinery.com. Big shout out to that whole crew. Um, love those guys, Lloyd Benedict and those guys. Uh, the rocking great little site, America's Wineries, AmericanWinery.com. Uh, Jess's 23rd birthday on June, on June 3rd, so we just missed that. And Tommy T's great classic Vaniac. His birthday just passed. Uh, Trwinski, I think is how he pronounces it. And uh, that's what's going on. And I think it's time for a question of the day. I was dying to get back, Mott. Two weeks was a long time. 
Question of the day. What is the last thing that made you smile? Life is awesome. So I want to know, what's the last thing that made you smile? Everybody, come out of the woodworks. We're changing, remember? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.